This week on Moving Markets, why is Top Glove pursuing a listing in Hong Kong? Crude palm oil is trading near a 13-year high and inflation continues to worry markets as US lawmakers passed a $1.9 trillion stimulus bill. Top Glove's core net profit surged 25 times on year in its most recent quarter. The world's largest rubber glove maker delivered strong earnings despite incurring higher raw material costs and lower sales volumes. Even a temporary production disruption due to a COVID-19 outbreak added some of its factories did not impact earnings thanks to higher average selling prices. Top Glove also announced its intention to list in Hong Kong this year. The question is why? Aside from being listed on Bursa Malaysia and a component of the FBM KLCI, the company also Trades on the Singapore Stock Exchange. It's increasingly common for companies to pursue a dual listing in order to tap into a wider investor base and diversify capital raising capabilities. However, a triple listing is rather unusual. Plus, Top Glove's intention to also list in Hong Kong will dilute the company's earnings per share. The Hong Kong listing also sends mixed messages to investors. Having spent over 1.4 billion ringgit on stock buybacks in the past six months, Top Glove also surprised investors with a 20% special dividend in January. January, signaling its strong cash reserves. Yet, it's pursuing a third listing on the basis of raising funds for expansion. Meanwhile, another glove giant, Hartalega, announced that it is investing 7 billion ringgit to build 16 new glove factories in Kedah over the next 20 years. With this expansion, Hartalega will increase its production capacity almost threefold by 2040. But how will rubber glove producers fare as we gradually shift into a post-pandemic era? Well, it seems that despite the global vaccination rollout, Glove players continue to bet on the sustained growth of the industry. Crude palm oil futures have reached 4,000 ringgit, a 13-year high and a 20% increase on a year-to-date basis. This is because in February, Malaysian palm oil inventories dipped 1.8% to levels not seen since 2004. Added to that, supplies of substitute vegetable oils like soybean and rapeseed are tight as South America's harvest only hit the market this month. Plus, the high prices coincide with the seasonality effect as buyers look to restock ahead of the Muslim festive season. Surprisingly, this is not reflected in the performance of plantations companies, which are mixed. Big planters like IY Corp, KLK and Gunting Plantations are all in negative territory on a year-to-date basis. So, can the CPO price rally last? In Malaysia, the second largest producer in the world, supply may soon recover and if weather conditions in the Northern Hemisphere are optimal, there could be a record supply of soybean and rapeseed seed oils, which would put pressure on selling prices by mid-year. Inflation remains to be the major theme driving markets as the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill becomes a reality. The bill will unleash a flurry of government expenditure via infrastructure spending and stimulus checks, among others. This has stoked fears of inflation, which has been absent from the American economy for about a decade. As a result, the yield on the 10-year Treasury note edged up past 1.6% this week, a sign that investors are shifting out of bonds since yields move inversely to price which is a gauge of demand. They also seem to be shifting out of tech. Ongoing inflation concerns have put selling pressure on the Nasdaq, now down about 7% on a one-month basis. Keep in mind that the Nasdaq is up nearly 60% from a year ago, with valuation of big tech names soaring. With inflation on the uptick, investors have started questioning these expensive valuations and may rotate from growth to cyclicals as broad economic recovery takes hold. But this week also saw the latest round of US Treasury options which met with decent demand. While a key inflation measure in the US, the core CPI, met expectations at 0.4%. So the jury is still out on whether inflation is an impending reality. In the meantime, keep a close eye on that 10-year Treasury yield. And that's what's been moving markets.